Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, November 14th, 2021, and in just about a year, voters will cast their ballots for the 2022 midterm elections. And in a most recent poll, ABC News, Washington Post, A-rated pollsters here, releasing a combined poll that shows the Republicans ahead with a 10-point advantage nationwide. Now, your initial reaction might be, this is an outlier, and in an essence, I do agree. I think that this poll absolutely is overestimating the amount of Republicans can support, but it does indicate a turning of the tide in favor of the GOP that cannot be ignored. And I think that understanding how this breakdown actually came about and understanding why the Republican poll, uh, sorry, the Republicans are ahead by 10 points in this poll is very understandable and very important for both political parties. Now, ABC News actually is not the first poll that has shown the Republicans ahead, as you might have seen, or as you can see on your screen right now. More recently, USA Today and Suffolk University released a poll that showed the Republicans ahead by eight points. Emerson College released a poll that showed the Republicans ahead by seven points. Harvard Harris released a poll showing the Republicans ahead by three points. Now, this was in the midst of a number of other polls that showed the Democrats ahead nationwide. Economist slash YouGov had the Democrats ahead by seven. That means there's a 17 point difference between the most recent Democrat leading poll and Republican leading poll. Very interesting to see. But overall, the RCP average, the Real Clear Politics average, puts the Republicans at an advantage of about 0.7% nationwide. That's very good for them. And this comes as a result of President Biden's approval rating dipping into uncharted territory here, nearing a nine-point difference between the disapprove and the approve, with Joe Biden being disapproved of at the highest point of his entire presidency today. It was on a brief downward spiral track. It was actually a difference of, you know, one point between the two time differences, but now it's back up to where it was before back up to its highest point, which is 51.4% of the nation disapproving of the job that Joe Biden is doing as president, 42.8% approving. Now, Joe Biden can't seem to get rid of this uh, position, and it ultimately is harming the Democratic Party down ballot. That's why the Democrats nearly lost New Jersey and lost the state of Virginia. Things like this don't just happen overnight. It may seem like it happened overnight, but largely this was in part due to the weeks and weeks and eventually months and months of Joe Biden being disapproved approved of nationwide. Now, the reason why I would say this is also an outlier poll is because they show 19% of the country disapproving of Joe Biden more than the rest of the nation. Even Rasmussen reports, which is historically a Republican-leaning pollster, specifically a President Trump-leaning pollster, even in the final days of the presidency, they said Trump was approved of, even though the majority of the nation, overwhelmingly, it was Joe Biden, sorry, Donald Trump's worst point in approval of his entire presidency. You can see that Rasmussen report still said that he was approved of, despite the January 6th insurrection. So, they obviously have some type of lean towards the right. In addition to that, I think that the Federalist also should be taken the same way. But as you see, ABC News does match sort of what the overall numbers are saying. Maybe a few points off, sorry, uh, about six, seven, eight points off of what the RCP average is saying. It's saying that Joe Biden is at negative 11 versus ABC News saying that it's at negative 19. So that's an eight point difference. But I do think that ABC News is onto something the same way that Harvard is onto something, the same way that Emerson is onto something, the same way USA Today is onto something. They are beginning to see the cracks in Democratic support across the nation, and you are now starting to see it in full force. I don't buy that Republicans are ahead by 10 points, but I think it is certainly a moment of worry. And if it is off by a margin of, let's say, eight points, as it is on the President Biden approval rating, well, taking away eight points still puts the Republicans ahead by two points. In order for Democrats to even have any shot at retaining their Senate majority, they need to win the popular vote. If they want to have any shot at retaining the House majority, and this is a far-fetched idea, a pipe dream at this point for Democrats, they need to be in the popular vote advantage by six to seven points. When you have the real clear politics average going to the Republican Party, you know it's a done deal. The House of Representatives is immediately lost, and considering the 13 to 14 point swing we have seen in these states that have held elections more recently, November 2nd, 2021, New Jersey, Virginia, when it come, came down to down ballot races, the same effect. 13, 14 point swings relative to how they voted in the 2020 presidential election. Those are very significant swings, and they are very bad for both, very, very bad for the Democratic Party. So if Republicans are able to replicate that, taking a look at the House election results from 2020, I mean, you would know the Democrats are done for you would know that the House would immediately flip. Forget looking at a 2012-type map. You're looking at the likes of 2014, 
This was the worst point for House Democrats in this entire 21st century. The worst point for House Democrats. They had 188 seats and Republicans had 247. Now, it's a little crazy to think that four years later, the Democrats ended up reclaiming control of the House of Representatives. But ultimately speaking, this is what the Democrats could be in for following 2022. In fact, it could be even worse. Looking at some of these more individual races that ended up going to the Democrats, for instance, Minnesota's 7th District is already gone. Nebraska's 2nd District is certainly going to be gone. I mean, looking at the races here, many of these districts are no longer as competitive as they were in the past no longer are as pro-democratic as they were in the past. Now, obviously, new districts from 2014 going to be a different type of map here. But the point being that because Republicans already have that advantage in redistricting, and because many of these seats are no longer competitive, Republicans have areas to target more heavily. For instance, these Texas races here, many of them that were even competitive in 2014, Democrats were able to fight for them, and Republicans had to spend money on those races. Now that they know they are solidified, they may not necessarily gain seats by drawing Texas districts that way. What they do is eliminate the way that they are competitive, and consequently, they don't need to spend money there. There no longer needs to be ad buys in Texas's 23rd district if it's now considered to be safe. Actually, I think the 23rd district might be the only one that was kept as safe. But for instance, Texas's second district with Dan Crenshaw, what used to be competitive now is overwhelmingly Republican. You no longer need to funnel money into there because it's no longer competitive. So with this Republican surge in support across the nation, they officially are claiming and are in the majority amongst the general populace. This is the first time this has happened during the entire 2022 polling season. You can see here that, for instance, NBC News started off this race back in April with Democrats ahead by five. Quinnipiac had Democrats ahead by nine. Two months later in July, it was to a one-point lead, and that stuck for a little bit. But then Democrats started to climb back up, even though Joe Biden was disapproved of around that time period or starting to dip in terms of overall approval, Democrats were still maintaining their lead. But then Afghanistan happened right around that time period, and then the approval rating began to dip and dip and dip, and then the economy started to change, and the gas prices started to rise, and the average daily goods started to rise in the supermarkets, and people began to realize, at some point, who are they going to blame? Even if it isn't Joe Biden's fault, people blame the person in office. And considering that Democrats have a trifecta, they have nobody else to turn to for blame. Think about this from the eyes of an average voter, because I made this argument back in 2020, and for the large part, there weren't any major disagreements. I think a major reason why Donald Trump lost the 2020 election wasn't because people thought that he couldn't govern correctly for those three years leading up before the pandemic, but rather because of the pandemic. It wasn't the sole reason. Obviously, a lot of things went into people's decisions for president, but I think that was a major part. When people see a pandemic ravage across the nation, when they know people who have died, when they have family members who have died, when they're out of a job for three, four, sometimes a year long in terms of a job because of lockdowns, because this virus wasn't managed from the beginning, even if the blame isn't directly Donald Trump, even if he didn't make the virus himself, they need someone to blame. Now that the Democrats are in office, you are seeing the exact same thing. The American public turns on whoever is in office. When things are bad, it's your fault. It is always your fault. It doesn't matter if it is or not. It's just simply based off the fact that you are in office and bad things are beginning to happen. And obviously, there is some type of inherent difference here. Um, you know, I think an inherent effect of the president and the Democrats in office, in the Senate, in the House of Representatives. But at the end of the day, you are seeing the Republicans become the favored ones because people want change. When they see things happening that are negative, they blame Joe Biden. When they see things that are happening that are, you know, maybe even complete scenarios that would never happen, for instance, outlawing Christianity, these are things that the Republican Party has been running on in terms of trying to create anxiety, and it's working effectively. Voters are scared about the future. They think that Joe Biden is driving the country into the ground. Another interesting metric that doesn't typically have any type of political, uh, I guess, negative impact or positive impact is this direction of the country poll. Now, even at times where presidents are reelected, people think that the country is moving in the wrong direction. For instance, on Election Day back in 2012, wrong track for the nation was plus 14 points nationwide. Even at this point in time, Barack Obama was reelected as president. When 2016 rolled around, it was at a negative point as well. And yet, Donald Trump was elected. 
And that sort of makes sense. You know, you're thinking, oh, that's why Donald Trump was elected, but that's not always the case. I think that, you know, when it comes down to this direction of the country poll, people are just generally very pessimistic. And you can track the sentiment. People will begin to blame those in office if they begin to believe that the country is on the wrong track. Right after the surge in the Black Lives Matter protests and racial tensions became an all-time high and COVID-19 was ravaging across the nation, just 23% of the nation said they believed we were moving in the right direction. We've seen actually one of the most drastic changes the day after the Capitol insurrection, when just 21% said that the country was going in the right direction and 70% said it was going in the wrong direction. Once Joe Biden was inaugurated and things started to get better with COVID-19, it actually narrowed down to a wrong track of plus seven. Today, wrong track has a 33-point lead over right direction. Think about that for an instance. So these voters are clearly saying, we believe we are moving in the wrong way. And now you start to see why these leads advance for the Republican Party, why you start to see Joe Biden fall out of public favor. And at the end of the day, the Democrats will be the only ones who do not benefit from this. They will lose in 2022 at this trajectory. They will lose control of the Senate. They will lose control of the House of Representatives. And if you're a Democrat watching this, you are very worried. At least you should be. Because you are in for what is going to be some very bad losses for the election. I am not one to try to say that a certain political party is going to lose more for whatever type of reason. There is no benefit of being wrong about the outcome of an election, especially as someone who predicts elections. I want to say that I am telling you this. Just based off the fact that I see these numbers, I've seen a lot of people, even recently actually, change their way that they understand my analysis. When Donald Trump was president, I had seen many comments calling me extremely left-wing and extremely uh, tilted towards the left. I still get some of those comments, but now I'm starting to see them circulate about me being too right-wing, too pro-right. I am telling you this not because I find any benefit from telling you it, but more so because I want you to understand the election and where we are today. And I'm sorry if you are a Democrat and you don't like to hear these things, but sometimes elections do not work in your way, and that is something that America, I think, is very big on doing. They will take your election and your political party and completely misfigure it for the sake of a midterm election, and then two years later, restore you back to your full power. I mean, in 2016, Donald Trump and the Republicans had a trifecta. Four years later, Democrats had a trifecta. Just think about that for a moment. So if you are whichever political party and whatever political standing that you are in, I am sorry if these are some things that you might not want to hear, or if you do want to hear them, then that's okay. I mean, these are just the standard understandings of our election, but these are things you cannot ignore. There is no way to spin a Republican plus 10 poll besides acknowledging that it is tilted towards the right, that that poll probably and more than likely is an outlier, but it does tell us things. There are things you can take from outliers. Polls can be bad sometimes. I'm surprised because ABC News and the Washington Post individually are A-rated pollsters. So them combined together, I thought they would have a very, very good poll. I also could be in for a complete misunderstanding here. Maybe future polls will begin to show Republicans ahead by double digits, and all of a sudden, ABC News does not become an outlier. But for right now, based even off the Real Clear Politics average or the 538 average, I do think that it is an outlier. But there are still many things to understand from it, and it's not the only one of its nature. You have the USA Today poll. You have the, the Emerson College poll. You have the Harvard-Harris poll. Now you have four pollsters here showing Republicans with an advantage. And almost all of the other pollsters that show Democrats ahead, it's by very narrow amounts. So if the polling data actually is just as wrong as it was in Virginia, Democrats are also in for a Republican victory nationwide. That's also something that I want to acknowledge, and I think that we should talk about that in a future video. All around here, by the time we have reached our final prediction, uh, our, our final election season in 2022, by the time we reach November, do not expect these polls to change too much. Unfortunately for the Democratic Party, we seem to be reaching a turning of the tide. What I mean by that is that looking at the generic ballot in previous midterms under Democratic presidents, Democrats typically maintain a lead for the beginning months of their early year, meaning the year preceding the midterm election year. Then by the time we reach November, right around this time period, actually, Republicans begin to take an advantage. It goes back and forth. It becomes a very narrow lead for Republicans. And then by the time we reach Election Day, Republicans are in the advantage. This was 2014. In fact, a worse year for Democrats than 2010. But in 2010, we saw the same exact thing happen. Democrats took a strong early lead. They were able to maintain it for quite some time. Then things started to narrow up by the time we hit November. Things came between a point. 
and then Republicans took the advantage, sometimes the Democrats narrowly overcoming them, leading into the next year, with eventually the Republicans leading off with a 9.4% lead by the end of the election season. This is the same story that has been told every time we have a Democratic president in office, every time it's happened in the 21st century, 2010 and 2014. And for the Democratic Party's sake, unfortunately for them, it's happening yet again, and they need to acknowledge it, and something has to change. You know, honestly, I couldn't be a White House strategist at this point. I couldn't tell you what you need to do, because you are starting to see Build Back Better become a very important issue for the Democratic Party. You just saw the infrastructure bill pass, and it's set to be signed, I believe, tomorrow night, right? So looking at those, yes, major deals for the Biden administration— but the voters don't exactly understand what that means. In addition to that, they are more focused on these social issues, critical race theory, mask mandates, reopenings, COVID-19 lockdowns, things like this are more important to voters than infrastructure right now. And the economy is something that voters care about. The rising gas prices are something that voters care about. And I honestly don't know how President Biden can go about tackling that. That's why I'm not a White House advisor right now. But just looking at the numbers here, they are clearly negatively responding to President Biden. And that's the same thing I've been telling you for months now. Just this time, Republicans have actually taken the lead in the generic congressional vote. For the longest time, Joe Biden has been deemed unpopular and it has been disapproved of across the nation. But for the first time in 2022 election history, Republicans have taken the advantage on the generic congressional vote. And this should terrify Democrats because this means the House is for sure gone and the Senate seems to be a done deal. But again, the time still to change it could happen. I do think, though, that considering historical understanding of 2010 and 2014, we are in for a very similar result as what we saw in the past. But things can certainly change for both political parties because that's just how American politics is. One year they love them and the next year they hate them. It could flip back to Democratic support by 2022's election. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.